Good morning. Good morning. Good morning to everyone that's in the sanctuary, those who are watching us via the live stream. We thank you for joining with us this morning because we know that you had many other options to worship God this morning. We thank you for worshiping with us. We're going to lift him. Yeah. That's what scripture says. Lift him. And he will do the draw. We give it all to him. Join us in this song as we praise his holy and his righteous name. Thank you for what you're doing in each and every one of our lives. Thank you, God, for 
where you brought us from, where we are, and God, where you're, where you're taking us to. Lord, each step that we take, we take it by faith, not knowing what tomorrow holds or the next second. But God, we're so thankful that no matter what life may throw at us, God, we know that you hold tomorrow. Thank you, Lord. Yes. And that all things is in your hands. All things. Yes. Lord, you're worthy this morning. Every one of us has a testimony of your grace and your mercy. Every one of us, God, can testify on how good you've been to us. So God, as we come this morning, help us to corporately worship you and give you the praise that you deserve. Meet with us this morning for the next few moments of this service. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. In Jesus' name, praise you.
Praise God from whom all blessings. Yes. 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 Praise him, all creatures here below. Yes. Praise him above, you heavenly host. Yes. Praise Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I know that that's normally used as a benediction. Amen. But I, I felt like this morning calling on him, All right. praising him. Mm -hmm. And as I think about and praise him, mm -hmm. try to let somebody else know why I want to give All praise right. to him. Mm -hmm. For those reasons, mm -hmm. word of God to the people of God. Amen. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Right. Fools despise wisdom and Word of God to the people of God. Thanks be to God. Proverbs first chapter, seventh verse. Good morning, dear God. Yeah, I got a smile on my face. Because we're still celebrating. <laughs> we're still celebrating the birthday and anniversary. So uh, hard to wipe that smile off right now. Amen. <laughs> it's rough. <laughs> rough to wipe it off, but that's a good roughness. <laughs> John Lewis said, that's good trouble. <laughs> So good trouble is a good thing to be in. If we look at the Bible, we can always go back to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Always just think about him in good trouble. Jesus Christ was good trouble. Whole time he was on earth. Whole time. He stayed in trouble. Know, because they Pharisees thought they were above everybody basically the way they they thought of religion so a lot of times they would try to trick him here and there but my God knows about good trouble you can't trick our God because he already knows about good trouble amen Amen. Let us all bow our heads in prayer, please. Oh, Father God, we are so blessed again to be in the house of the Lord. Father God, you have just been so wonderful and so good to us. Not at just this moment, but through it all. Through it all. Through it all, God, you've been good to us. Through it all. You've been good to us when things were going good. Those are ups. You were good to us when things were going bad. And those were our downs. And in between, when we didn't think about it, you were still in the midst, taking care of business. When our minds were drifting somewhere else, you were there. And God, we said thank you this morning. Thank you this morning, God, for just waking us today. Thanking us for giving us another opportunity to be in the house of the Lord, to be able to arrive here safely. Oh, God, you've just been so wonderful. Lord, we thank you today that you're the God that you are. So today, God, we're asking that you, you, God, give Dr. Brown those words that will resonate deep down in our soul and our hearts and fill us with the Holy Spirit. God, we ask you that you would anoint the choir voices and the pianists, anoint each and every soul that's with us today, and even those who are watching virtually. 
anoint those who are not watching us but at some service somewhere God look out for those who are not at service somewhere because we're all your children Lord wherever we may be and whatever we may do we thank you for what you are doing for us <coughs> so, dear God today we just want to say thank you God thank you not enough thank yous in this world that can come from my lips because I owe you so much more. A oh, wonderful Savior today we're asking prayer for our own Brother Jay Brown and Michael Hudson for the family of Brother Jeff Hunt all his kin, Michael and Gwen and Jeff, for Brad. We ask in prayer for Brother Frankie Johnson. And, oh God, the list just goes on and on and on. Sister Maxine Johnson for Evangelist Murray and Hunt. And for Pastor John Joyner. God, the list is just so long. Names I cannot even remember. But God, you have a list. You know who's on the list. And God, I want to include each and every soul that's on that list. For one for God, we ask you today for prayer for our communities and for our leaders. Prayer for us who have to follow those leaders' orders commands that they have on upon us. Father God, we ask you today to show us the way to guide us. Let us not stray away, but let us follow in the footsteps of our Lord and Savior. Follow in those footsteps. Don't, I don't want to get ahead. I want to follow in the footsteps. I'm not the leader, but my Savior is the leader. And if I follow in his footsteps, I know all will be well. So God, today we just want to say thank you. Thank you, Lord, for each and every soul. Thank you for the souls that are not able to be with us today. And those who may be traveling far. Ask them that they will get there safe and return home safe as well. These and many other prayers. We are praying for those who are not with us today. We're praying for every soul that's watching us. Every soul. We're praying for Bessie Perry. And, ah, such a God. Such a God. Such a God. Such a God. We're praying for Eva Watson. Such a soul. Oh God, thank you for sending those names to my mind. So the list goes on. The list goes on. And our prayer goes out to each and every soul. Because we know that you, God, are the healer. You are the only doctor that we can really depend on. You are the one. So today, God, as we come to this service day, we're going to worship you and we're going to praise you, God. We're going to honor you, God. We're going to give it our all in all. God, we thank you for giving us the breath and the energy. So we're going to give that breath and energy back to you by honoring you and glorifying you today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.
slip out. We've got a couple other services this afternoon. So, Sister Nicole, whoever's doing announcements, y'all go ahead. Come on. And then uh, they're going to sing, and then we're going to preach. Amen. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. And happy fifth Sunday. Mother, it's good to see your beautiful self back in the house today. We missed you. I come to bring you guys an announcement today. We would like to thank each of you that are in the house this morning with us. We want to thank those of you that are watching online and anybody that will be watching later today, maybe even later this week on Facebook or YouTube. We appreciate your support and your love. Please remember to like and share and comment on our service so we can interact with you. If you have a prayer request, feel free to pop it in there so we know how to be praying for you this week. Please check us out on our social media platforms. Again, that's Facebook. We have Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. We are broadcasting on channel 18 and 1304 every Tuesday at 11 a.m. as well as 97.5 digital. If you would like to contact the church, you can email us at coxmorialfwbc at gmail.com or you can contact us on our website and that's coxmorialfreewillbaptistchurch.org. If you'd like to set a financial seed, a contribution into our church, you can bring it to 1632 Riddle Road, that's Durham, North Carolina, 27713, or you can give online via Cash App or Tidely. Our Cash App is dollar sign Cox Memorial FWBC, and you can get to Tidely by going to our website and click on the Donate tab, and it'll walk you through. Remember to tune in on Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m. for Corporate Bible Study. We would like to say happy birthday and happy anniversary those of you celebrating this month, our drummer Anderson had his 10th birthday on Thursday, right. and Greg is going to have a birthday tomorrow. Right. <laughs> so we celebrate that, um, so we'll sing to them in honor of their special day.
across the swelling tide. Amen. Amen. Take your Bibles. Bless the name of the Lord this morning. Take your Bibles to the book of Ecclesiastes. Uh, the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter number two. We're going to look at a couple of verses, several verses this morning, I'll give you. Uh, but Ecclesiastes chapter two. And verse 17 will be our main thought and our main focus. Amen. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 2 and verse 17. The Bible declares, therefore, I hated life because the work that is wrought under the sun is grievous unto me. For all is vanity and vexation of the spirit. Therefore, I hated life. I want to talk to you this morning on that thought. I hate life. I hate life. The question is, and the age, mother, the age-old question, is life worth living? We have all found ourselves, no matter who we are, or where we are, what our social status may be, we have all found ourselves frustrated with life, even to the point of wanting to die. There's almost an over 5,000 lives lost each year to what we know as suicide. We've all been at the point where we were like Job. We've all had times in our lives that we were like Elijah. We've all had times in our lives that we were like Moses. We've had times in our lives that we were like Jonah. Yeah, these, these men, they, in their lives, at one point of time, wanted to die. Uh, because of what life had thrown at them, because of what was in front of them because of what they were encountering. But brothers and sisters, despite where Moses might have been, despite where Job was, despite where Elijah was, despite where Jonah was, Dr. Gamble, we know their stories, uh -huh, each of them later changed their minds. Right. Let me say, first of all, this morning, you can't get help unless you're honest. Let me say that again. No one, no one of us can get help unless we're honest. Here, brothers and sisters, uh, many hate life because of depression. Uh, many hate life because of disappointments. Many hate life because of even decisions that they have made. Uh, brothers and sisters, every year over 150,000 young people, youth, receive treatment uh, because of self-inflicted wounds. Uh, this morning, this morning, when I read this verse in our hearing, uh, Solomon here, as he's pinning down and stating to us, therefore, I hated life, I, I wondered why Solomon made such a statement. He said, for all is vanity and vexation of spirit. Well, I looked at that. What is a vexation? Well, it is a emptiness. Come on here. It's a, uh -huh. it's a place of uh, emptiness. And I don't know about you, but we've all had a time in our life where we have had a place of emptiness. Uh-huh, yes, yeah, see, see, here it is. Shame will make you hate life. Situations will make you hate life. Uh, but here, as Solomon made such a statement, uh, uh -huh, I wondered why that was. There's, there's three things I want to give you quickly this morning out of the corridors of this one verse, but we're going to look at some others. Uh-huh, why did he say Therefore, I hated life. Yeah, we, we've been there. We, we've had some situations that the situation came, and mother, because of that, we said, I hate life. 
Come on here. We can all act spiritual this morning. I know this ain't no shouting message, but I got to preach what I was on my heart. Uh -huh. So tell, uh -huh. he said, therefore I hate it. Like, why was that? Deacon John, well, first of all, when I looked here, uh -huh, in chapter number 1 and verse 13, uh -huh, you can look at it with me, read it later, he said, and I gave my heart to seek and search out by wisdom concerning all things that are done under heaven. This sore travail have God given to the sons of man to be exercised therewith. Uh -huh. So he said, therefore I hated life. Because, number one, he was in a search for satisfaction. Uh -huh. Well, we just read that in chapter 1, verse 13. I just read it to you. He was in a search for satisfaction. Well, how, uh, where was that search for satisfaction? Well, uh -huh. he, he tried that through laughter. Uh -huh. Through laughter. See, we, I believe we search for a lot of the right things, but in the wrong places. Uh-huh. Yeah, so as he was searching for this satisfaction, Dr. Gamble, where was he searching? Well, number one, he was searching for it through laughter. Well, how did I get that? I'm going to give you scripture. Uh-huh. In chapter 2 and verse 2 and 3, I said of laughter, it is mad and mirth, what doeth it? I sought in my heart to give myself unto wine, yet acquainting my heart with wisdom, and to lay hold on folly till I might see what was that good for the sons of men which they had should do under the heaven in all the days of their life. So in other words, he was trying to find satisfaction through laughter. He said, look, I sought in my heart to give myself unto wine. I want to tell you something. You can drink all you want to, but it won't drive your problems away. Come on here. Yeah, yeah, see, he said through laughter. Uh-huh, see, in other words, uh, Solomon was saying partying, uh-huh, did not get me the help that I need. Uh, the liquor bottle didn't give me the help that I need. Come on here, somebody. Uh-huh, the wine bottle didn't give me the help that I need. If you look at Solomon and where he was and study where he was, you could say Solomon brought in Las Vegas. Come on here, somebody. Uh-huh, Solomon was living it up and partying it up. Uh-huh, see, and a lot of times people, when they get in situations and circumstances, they get to the place where Solomon was, uh -huh, they try to find and ease their problems uh, through satisfaction, right. through laughter. <laughs> see, see, brothers and sisters, here it was that Solomon tried to whine, he tried to party, and he, he tried to laugh it away, he tried to smile it away. Uh -huh. But brothers and sisters, uh -huh, Solomon could not laugh it away. Solomon couldn't smile it away. Solomon couldn't drink it and party it away. And I want to tell you this morning, uh-huh, you can't smile your problems away. <laughs> you can't laugh your problems away. Amen. You cannot drink your problems away. Uh-huh. But here it is. And so Solomon tried all of these things, uh, but then still found himself where he was. In the same place. Uh, see, he was searching for this satisfaction through laughter. You see, uh -huh, he said, I hate life. So because of the situations and circumstances, because of where I am in life, uh -huh, I'm trying to find this satisfaction not only through laughter, but watch this. He tried to find it through labor. Look at chapter 2, verse 4 through 10. He says, I made me great works. <laughs> I builded me houses, I planted me vineyards, I made me gardens and orchards, I planted trees in them all kinds of fruit, I made me pools of water to water therewith, the wood that bringeth forth trees, I, I got me servants and maids and, and servants born in my house also. I had great possessions of great and small cattle above all that were in Jerusalem before me. I gathered me also silver and gold and peculiar treasures of kings in the provinces. I gave me, me, me and singers and singing, uh, women singers and the, the, the lights of the sons of men as musical instruments and all of sorts. Watch what he says. So I was great and increased more 
that all that were before me in Jerusalem, also my wisdom remained with me. And whose whatsoever mine eyes desired, I kept not from them. I withheld not my heart from any joy, for my heart rejoiced in my labor, and this was my portion of all my labor. Uh -huh. So here it was. Uh, he couldn't find what he was looking for in partying and smiling and laughing and drinking and with his friends and his buddies. So then he tried to work it away. Ah, yeah. uh, uh, here it is through labor. Come on here. See, it's a dangerous place. It's dangerous when we make pursuit of labor uh -huh, to satisfy our needs. Uh -huh. See, what are you saying, Pastor? Well, people, some people work to escape their life problems. Uh -huh. Some people work to escape their home life. Uh, but Solomon said, uh, uh -huh, he hated even the labor that he was putting in. <laughs> he said, I tried to work it away. I, 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 I bought and, and made me uh, houses and and I bought land and I planted gardens and vineyards and I and I pruned my bushes and I watered my trees and my flowers and I and I and, and but but all of this labor still at the end of the day I could not get out of my problem. Even after at the end of the day when five o'clock came, I went home, I was still in dissatisfaction. Uh, here it is. Uh, we can we can smile all we want to. We can drink all we want to. We can party all we want to. We can work all we want to. But one uh, sooner or later, five o'clock's coming. You still got to go home. Come on here, somebody. Amen. Uh -huh. We can go to sleep at night. Amen. And still wake up tomorrow and the same problem be there. Uh -huh. So here's Solomon saying, I'm still not finding my satisfaction. Uh, here it is. Here it is. He said... Uh -huh. See, Solomon said, I bought all of this. I, I made all of this. I, I built all of this. I, I done all of this. But watch this. <laughs> Solomon said, in the midst of that, I still hated where I was. <laughs> and Solomon realized, watch this, <laughs> that one day I'm going to die. <laughs> and all of this is going to be left here for somebody else. <laughs> Well, how do I know that? Well, in verse 11, because some of y'all looking at me, how do I get there? Well, in verse 11, then I looked on all the works that my hands had done and on the labor that I had labored to do. And behold, all was vanity and vexation of spirit. And there was no profit under the sun. So what's that tell me? He's still saying, Dr. Gamble, I still hate life. I'm still not finding the satisfaction that I need. I'm still not finding uh, the desire that I need. Amen. I still have a vexation of spirit. I'm still down. I'm still depressed. I'm still disappointed. It's still disappointed. And the decisions that I'm still making are still not bringing me what I need. So he tried to find this through laughter. He tried to find this through labor. But watch this now. Then he tried to find it through love. <laughs> yeah, he said, well, the laughter didn't work. <laughs> Me working all the time and burning myself out didn't work. <laughs> uh -huh. but, then, but then he said, I tried to find it through love. Well, how do I know that? Look at uh -huh, uh, chapter 7 with me. Of the same book, Ecclesiastes chapter 7 and verse 26 and through 28. He says, And I find more bitter than death the woman whose heart is, is snares and nets and her hands as bands, who, who so pleases God shall escape from her, but the sinner shall be taken by her. Behold, uh, this have I found, saith the preacher counting uh, one by one to find out the account which yet my soul seeketh, but I find not one man among a thousand have I found, but a woman among all those have I not found. So what's he saying? I tried to find my satisfaction next through love. Yeah. 
See, see, if you was to read uh, First Kings, uh, you would find that they uh -huh, the, uh, turned Solomon to their gods. Uh, see, Solomon turned over to the little G. He started worshiping the little G. He started doing what the little G wanted him to do. And I've come to find out sometimes uh -huh, our depression and our disappointments and our circumstances and our situations uh, and the hate that we have for life sometimes will turn us away from God. Uh -huh. It will allow us and make us walk away. Ain't none of us exempt from walking away from God. None of us are exempt from getting in a place of woe is me looking to heaven under our juniper tree, under our God saying, Lord, just kill me. God, just take me out because I'm tired of going through the same old thing. I'm tired of taking one step and getting knocked three back. I'm tired of trying to move forward and something's always in the way. None of us are exempt. And here Solomon is, amen, trying to find what God had all along through the wrong places. And here he is, as we close, he's, he's turned away from God and he's looking to the low G's. And, and in chapter 7 that we read and the verses that we read, here it is, he talks about this woman and this lady that, that uh, has, has got his attention uh, off of what really matters. And I want to tell us all that no man or no woman should ever contradict your life and what God has for your life. See, your spouse is not to contradict your life, but to compliment your life. Your significant other is not to contradict your life, but to compliment your life. So here Solomon is saying, Lord, I've tried everything, but I, therefore, I hated life. Because the work that is wrought before me under the sun is grievous unto me. So he's saying everything that I have done, everything that I've tried to do, it still didn't feel the emptiness. He said it still didn't feel the vexation of my spirit. I come to tell you this morning, maybe in the building, maybe watching, and you may feel like this text. You may feel like Solomon and say, here I am. You don't understand where I am. And I want to tell you this morning, I may not understand where you are. Uh-huh. Your neighbor may not understand where you are, but God understands where you are. And here it is. You may be here. You may be watching and say, I just hate life. I'm, I'm in this situation and it seems nothing is going right. It seems everything's hitting me in the face. It seems I'm trying to do the best I can. It seems I, I'm trying to, I'm trying to do this and, and do that. And everywhere I turn, the enemy's on my trail. Everywhere I turn, trouble on every hand. But I come to encourage somebody. Hey Amen. You don't have to hate life. You don't have to have a vexation of spirit. You don't have to have an empty place. You don't have to feel, good God Almighty, like you're unwanted and uncared about because that's good news. There's a God in heaven that loves you and sees, looks beyond your thoughts and sees your needs. He sees your situation. There's a God. You don't have to hate life. You don't have to be disappointed. You don't have to be discouraged because the Bible said you were made in God's image. You were made within the likeness of God. And God loves you this morning regardless of where you are. Yes. Yes. Solomon said, I hate life. I hate life. I tried all of these things. But I could not find what I was looking for. I tried all of these avenues. But I could not find 
what I was looking for. And that may not be you this morning. You may know somebody, your children, your grandchildren, somebody you work with, somebody that you know that may be in Solomon's place this morning. And when you look at their life, they're trying, they're doing everything they know uh, uh -huh, not to do, doing all the wrong thing, trying to find satisfaction elsewhere and trying to fulfill a void. And it may be you this morning because life has threw you some lemons and life has, has got you down in life has got you disappointed that you're trying other things. Amen. But I just want to tell you, and I'm preaching to the choir, just try Jesus. Come on here. Because he's all right. I, I, I tried him, Brother Greg, and he's all right. Yes, life ain't always easy. Life has its ups and downs. Yes, I wake up some morning and say, Lord, here I am again. Good God Almighty. Life is going to throw me hell and curveballs. But Lord, you let me see another day. So let me and make the best of it. Let me put one knowing God with. I do put one step and I get my free back. You gonna give me the strength to get up and take another step. Good God, like you don't have to be down. You don't have to be discouraged. You don't have to be disappointed because God cares for you. He said, therefore, I hated life because of where I am. We've all been there. We've all had those moments. Elijah had those moments. Job had those yeah. moments. Yeah. Moses had his moment. Yeah. Jonah had his moment. Yeah. But as I told you, the story didn't end with them in the belly of the whale. The story didn't end, amen, with, with, with Moses, uh -huh, where he was. Uh huh. It didn't end, brothers and sisters, with them sitting there saying, Lord, here I am under my gourd, <laughs> under my juniper tree. Here I am, Lord. I don't understand why, what's going on, what's going on, but Lord, it, it's got me, my feelings in a, in a place. But Lord, I know that you're still God. Amen. Therefore, I hated life because of the, 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 the work and the wrong. It's brought me vexation in my spirit. There's things in your life that's brought you emptiness. Yeah. There's things in your life that, that's got you where you may be this morning. But the good news is we don't have to stay there. We don't have to stay there. Bow your heads with me. Therefore, I hated life. You may be here this morning. You may be watching online, and life has thrown you some curveballs. Life has thrown you some, some valleys that you did not intend on walking through. Life has thrown your family some situations that you didn't intend on being in. And you may have found yourself feel like you're losing it all. Waking up in the morning saying, I just, I don't want to get out of bed. Waking up in the morning saying, do I really have to face this day? Waking up in the morning seeing the sun shine and saying, Lord, What's next? Solomon, because of his life, he hated life. And as I mentioned this morning, that he tried and searched for satisfaction in all the wrong places. You may be here, you may be looking online and you may feel like Solomon, you may feel like the scriptures that we read this morning and, and because of life and the situation that you will have begin to search for satisfaction and answers in all the other places except for looking to God.
But David said, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills for which cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. And if he made the heavens and the earth, I know he's got me covered. So where you are this morning, would you just say, Lord, here I am, and you know where I'm at, Lord. I, I feel like I hate life. I feel like I'm just disappointed and discouraged. Even decisions that I've made have messed me up. But Lord, I know your grace and mercy is going to carry me. Father, in the name of Jesus, for those that are here, those that are watching, for every one of us that may have been, may be in this morning, a place like Solomon. Help us, oh God, to, to understand that because of where we are this morning, it, it's not going to always be like that. Trouble don't last always. Trouble comes, but it, it goes. We have some highs and we have some lows in life. But God, for every one of us that are in different places in our lives this morning, would you just encourage us? Would you just lift us up? Would you just give us strength to make it day by day? And Lord, if there's somebody watching, if there's somebody here that don't know you in the parlor of their sin, I pray today would be their day. Today is the day of salvation, that they would admit that they are sinner, believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He died, shed his blood, and was resurrected on the third day, that they would confess and repent of their sin. God, touch it in every one of us. Continue to lead and guide our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's